Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to another one of my videos. With the Christmas holidays almost upon us, I thought I'd show you how to roast a family sized joint of beef. Now we normally use joints of beef much larger than the one I'm about to show you, but the process and temperatures are basically the same and it's just a question of altering the roasting times for a more domestic sized joint. Before starting, I'll preheat the oven to a very hot 240 degrees Celsius, that's 465 Fahrenheit, or gas mark between 8 and 9. I'm setting mine to 220 Celsius, as my oven is fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. And this is the joint of Irish topside I'll be roasting today. Take the meat out of the fridge and let it sit at room temperature at least 30 minutes before starting. Disregard the roasting instructions on the label. I'm sure it's very nice but we can do better than that. As you can see it's just less than 2 kilograms. That's just over 4 pounds in weight. And as you'll see a little later it's important to know the weight of your beef before starting. So if you haven't got scales make sure you make a note of the weight from the label. So the meat isn't sitting directly on the bottom of the roasting tin, I'm going to cut some thick slices of onion for it to sit on. I like to use these red onions as the flavour isn't as strong as ordinary onions. I like to give the meat a bit of a rinse and dry in the sink. This is just to prevent the loose blood from running all over the place. And there it is, that's all the preparation you need. This is the roasting tin I'll be using. The dimensions of the tin are on screen. I'll arrange the onions in such a way that when I put the meat on it isn't touching the bottom of the tin where it could possibly dry out or even burn. Now you can add other vegetables to the tin if you want like parsnip, carrots, garlic, turnip but I'm just going to keep it simple. And one thing I forgot to show in the video is I covered the joint with half a teaspoon of ordinary table salt and rubbed it into the meat by hand. And that's it. And that's all you need to do to start roasting this beef. Right, I'll be roasting this beef using two different temperatures. First at this really hot initial temperature of 240 degrees Celsius. That's 465 Fahrenheit or gas mark 9. And I'll set the timer for 25 minutes. This will seal the outside of the beef and lock in all those juices. Once the time is up and without opening the oven door, reduce the heat to 190 degrees Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit or gas mark 5. Now this is where the weight of the beef comes into it. This joint was 2 kilograms or around 4 imperial pounds so I need to set the timer for 30 minutes per kilogram or 15 minutes per pound. Either way I need to set the timer for 60 minutes and that will give you a rare beef. Now we like medium rare so I'm adding a further 15 minutes to make sure mine comes out medium rare. So in total that's 1 hour 15 minutes at this temperature. About halfway through the hour and 15 minutes, take the beef out and give it a quick baste as shown. This will stop the outside from drying out too much and it adds flavour to the meat. And to keep the temperature constant in the oven, make sure you close the oven door while basting. You can baste the meat two or three times if you wish, but I've found once is enough for this size joint of beef. And that's all there is to it, the roasting is done. Thank you. 
And this next part is important, and that is to let the meat rest and relax for at least 15 minutes. This allows the meat juices to redistribute throughout the beef, resulting in a more tender and juicy joint of beef. So I'll transfer it to a plate and cover it with a loose fitting bowl. And while the meat's resting, I can get on with making the gravy. First thing is to remove the onions, they've done their job. Now all that sediment and beef fat in the tin is packed with flavour. So I'm going to add approximately 500 ml of hot water to loosen it all off. You could have half water and half red wine if you wished. Once it's all dissolved, I'll transfer it to a saucepan. When it comes to a simmer, I'll add a couple of beef stock cubes. Then to thicken it up a bit, I'm mixing a heaped teaspoon of corn flour, you may know that it's corn starch, to a couple of tablespoons of water and I'll add a little at a time. Don't add too much of it because it'll become too thick. And finally, I'll add a couple of knobs of butter, approximately 30 grams, that's one ounce. This will give the gravy a glossy appearance. Not quite finished with the gravy yet, the juices that have seeped from the beef can go into the gravy too. Ok, I'll remove the netting and cut a couple of slices off. Right, here we go. And this is how my wife and I like our beef. But like I said earlier, if you prefer a rarer beef, then don't add the extra 15 minutes. But this is perfect for us. It's still quite juicy and through experience I can tell by the way the knife is cutting through it that it's going to be tender. Well, you can't have roast beef without the Yorkshire pudding, even if it is only a taste test. And if you want to know how to make these Yorkshires at home, I'll leave a link in the description box below the video. I'll also leave a link to my delicious roast potato recipe. Well, I may as well go the whole way. Let's have some of that wonderful silky rich gravy. Oh yes, and like I said earlier, it's lovely and tender and it's absolutely delicious. Guess what I'm having for lunch? Okay, I'll cut another couple of slices so you can see what it's like a bit closer to the middle of the joint. And just look at how juicy that is. Ah, 
And if you do have any left after your meal, it should last four to five days in the fridge. But to keep those juices locked in, double wrap it in cling film or plastic wrap or whatever you call it where you live. Well, I hope this video has been useful and has taken some of the mystery out of roasting beef, especially for you less experienced viewers. Meat, and I'm talking about any meat, is so expensive these days and some people can be a bit reluctant to take the chance and risk messing it up. But if you follow this recipe using any of the roasting beef joints, you'll do fine. And I hope you agree, this one definitely gets a thumbs up. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.